We spend a third of our lives sleeping. We get about 400 haircuts. We file our taxes every year. We go to the dentist, we floss for six months, and then we go to the dentist again. We exercise, cook dinner, do the dishes. We sleep, rinse and repeat. What do all these things have in common? They're all forms of self-maintenance. Most of our lives consist of maintenance doing everyday things just to keep ourselves going. In fact, odds are, in nearly every organization you'll ever be a part of, the majority of resources go towards maintenance. And yet, we don't think much about maintenance. We see it as unglamorous, and we take it for granted. Instead, we're drawn towards innovation, the next new and shiny thing. And yet, effective maintenance enables innovation. Without maintenance, we can't create the resilient businesses, technologies, and processes that introduce lasting positive change into the world. Let's walk through why designing an effective maintenance strategy is key to fostering innovation and how three techniques can set you up for long-term success. So, why is maintenance so important? Maintenance costs grow over time if not constrained, hampering innovation and causing organizations to fail. When I was a software engineering manager at Google, my team owned a system that had started out simple but had grown to be extremely costly to maintain. In the beginning, adding new features was fairly easy. Engineers had a blank canvas, and the world was their oyster. Then over time, the number of moving pieces increased. Servers and databases were added. And the prospect of adding a new feature became increasingly daunting. First, we had to figure out how the existing system worked. Then we had to figure out how to add something new without breaking anything in the process. As we added more and more features on top of this shaky foundation, the complexity snowballed. We struggled just to keep our brittle system up and running. And although we were a development team tasked with building and launching new features, over 60% of our time was spent on maintenance. This fragile high maintenance system hindered our ability to innovate and introduce the technologies that would advance the business. Failing to keep maintenance costs in check meant the difference between a competitive, innovative product and stagnating. So, how do we design a maintenance strategy that fosters innovation and sets us up for success? Here are three techniques to consider. First, we define our goals. Consider the Golden Gate Bridge. You may not know this, but the Golden Gate Bridge isn't repainted every 10 years, not every five, but continuously. As soon as they finish one coat of paint, they start again with the next. This is the maintenance cost to keep up the Golden Gate Bridge's glow. The maintenance team can't just shut down the bridge every time they need to repaint. They paint alongside traffic, which adds to the maintenance complexity. Now, maybe this maintenance cost is worth it for the iconic Golden Gate Bridge, which is crossed by three million cars every month. But is it worth it for that tricky feature that was built five years ago and only 2% of users know exist? When we introduce something new into the world, we should consider how our design choices impact the cost to maintain it. Complex maintenance can be okay, as long as the cost-benefit trade-off aligns with our goals. The second thing we need to think about is how the systems we build evolve over time and how our maintenance strategy aligns with our short and long-term goals. Let's say you're starting a library. Begin with 10 books and set them up outside your house. 
unsorted as a small neighborhood lending library. If this is the maximum size you want your library to grow, you're done. No need to bring in the Dewey Decimal System. But if you want your library to grow, having unsorted books becomes increasingly unwieldy. Imagine trying to find that specific book that you want in a pile of 100, 500, or 1,000. Instead, when you first create the library, you can make a plan to check back in at 50 books, assess your collection, and introduce a system to keep the books organized. If you only have 10 books, it's probably not worth introducing biography and science fiction sections. You'd have to create labels, and at that point, you probably don't even really know what your library is going to contain. But once you get to about 50 books, it's worth considering if you should organize them before the cost to reorder them skyrockets. Maybe you split them into fiction and nonfiction and alphabetize them. Now, when any new book enters the library, it's put in its proper place. When your library grows to 200 books, maybe you subdivide the fiction section into mystery, fantasy, and science fiction. The point is, your maintenance strategy should consider your short and long-term goals. It's okay to be scrappy in the beginning. Most startups rely on being scrappy to validate key hypotheses and attract their initial users. But if your long-term plan is to grow, you'll need to make investments along the way to keep maintenance costs in check. You don't want to unknowingly build the library of a thousand unsorted books. You want to be aware of how your system evolves over time and how your maintenance strategy aligns with your short and long-term goals. The third thing we need to think about in a successful maintenance strategy, develop a culture of ownership. Let's say you own your house. If you plan to live there for the next 20, 30, 40 years, how would you think about upkeep? If something's broken, wouldn't you fix it? Similarly, in organizations, product teams should be product owners. Product owners think about long-term success and make needed investments to keep maintenance costs in check. They're not just thinking about their current feature launch. They're thinking about what investments they need to make now to set themselves up for two feature launches from now. They balance maintenance and innovation. A culture of ownership aligns individual incentives with long-term organizational success. Leaders create this culture by rewarding maintainability improvements in the same way as new feature launches. Maintenance is not a burden. It's part of a successful innovation strategy. The two are inherently linked. Maintenance leads to innovation, and innovation leads to maintenance. So whether you're building the next unicorn, building a process improvement, uh, perform, building a performance improvement process in a growing organization, or you just want a good report from your dentist, don't get so carried away by innovation hype that you forget to tend to your foundation. Instead, design an effective maintenance strategy by defining your goals, anticipating and monitoring how your system will evolve over time, and developing a culture of ownership. When you design a maintenance strategy around these three things, you set yourself up for long-term success. And building an effective maintenance strategy is existential. It means the difference between introducing lasting positive change into the world and drowning in the complexity of brittle, high-maintenance systems. Thank you. <laughs>